Welcome, uh, Sharon, um, to, well, uh, an interview series, I guess, that we're doing at the View Simulators Lab. Um, so could you introduce yourself and say um, who you work for and uh, what we're doing here today? Yeah, sure. So my name is Sharon Dixon. I'm an Associate Professor in Sport and Health Sciences at the University of Exeter. I'm a biomechanist, so I look at how the different loads act on the body, and in particular the lower limb, and how that might influence risk of injury. And I'm particularly interested in sports applications. So the work that I've done has looked at a range of different sports and how different people's build, if you like, their different structure might influence whether they're going to get injured or not, and also what they do and what they wear. So I'm particularly interested in footwear and how different uh, footwear and playing surfaces, for example, can influence the risk of injury. I see. And, and part of that research being done in V simulators is that you can measure those forces on the floor and you can track their body positions. Yeah, that's true. Now, historically, and um, what we have traditionally in the lab based at St. Luke's campus is very similar to this, but a scaled down version. So we have, and this would be the true for most force plates across the world, we have a lab that has a force plate that's this type of size. Oh, wow. And so you're looking at um, any type of application, walking or running, or some of the things we look at, which are change of direction skills, where we ask people to, to run and plant their foot on the force plate and then run back the other way, for example. All of those things that we do in a traditional lab, we're relying on the person either deliberately hitting the force plate or getting them to do lots of trials and hoping they'll hit the force plate so that you can measure that force. So you only get the data of that that particular one footstep. One footstep. That's so you don't right. even don't even have to run up to it. Uh, the individuals can run up, and we have some technologies to capture the movement during that period. And we have um, pressure measuring it, devices we can put inside the shoe that can get consecutive steps. But in terms of the magnitude of force being accurately determined, we only have this one, or we have two in a line but we're still not getting the whole movement. We're not capturing the whole movement in terms of the force that's acting externally on the person. And we want that ideally so we can use it to both measure that force in itself and also combine it with movement data to estimate loads on the joints, for example, which you can imagine is the kind of thing that's most likely linked to injury. So when vSIM, the plans for vSIM were, were seen, I was very excited. Um, a, what, a, an example at the time which came to mind straight away we were doing studies in the lab where we were looking at different tennis playing surfaces. So you, you might be aware that tennis is played on a real range of different surfaces with different characteristics. The, the most marked difference being perhaps when you compare a clay surface where the players deliberately slide, especially the top level players, whereas a hard court surface, most players would not be able to slide on it, although we do see some of the top players doing so. And so you can imagine there's different movements and different injury risks with those. And the International Tennis Federation have been very interested in seeing what's different about how players play on those surfaces and whether it affects the loads and possibly both performance and injury risk. And the way we've looked at that so far is to ask players to run over different surfaces that we place over the top of the plate and perform certain stopping and turning movements. And when we do that, we don't capture everything. We just capture the sliding foot, for example, mm. and often, what we've seen when we do field data collection and we've viewed how people perform move, uh, turning movements, it's the other leg, so the pre-step that is really changing its movement and you put most on that. And we could just focus on the pre-step, but then we don't get the sliding phase. So we're playing around with different ways in the lab of understanding segments of a skill. Mm. And when I heard about this plate that was going to be four meters <laughs> by four meters, you're like, wow, we could, can okay, get full picture, we can't then. do a whole football match or a whole <laughs> tennis match, but we can do isolated skills, but in full. Hmm. And I'm really excited about how we can do that, that we yeah. can start to look at those full movements. Because I imagine it's incredibly hard if, you, if you're like, like you said, trying to do like a change in direction and then they go, they hit the force plate on the first try and then, but then to rebalance themselves, they then step off of the force plate and you want to capture that other yes. step. Oh yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, so this is very exciting because, yeah, the, the tools that are in here are the same. It's a force plate, it's a motion capture system, um, there's a harness, which we do have as well, so you can do things that might be slightly on the risky side. So we could ask people to turn, but fool them in terms of 
what that surface is, whether it's wet or not, for example, and how important that is. And the extra facility in here, of course, is the virtual reality. So we really can work on fooling people into thinking they're turning on a clay surface when actually they're not. There's going to be risk assessments involved with such a thing. We have to be careful not to cause injury, of course. But yeah. we, with a, a harness combined with virtual reality and this full area, open up so many different options for what we could do. The, the, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is that once you're in virtual reality, you obviously don't have any notion of the physical space that you're in. So you can put obstacles in uh, to, to trip people uh, unexpectedly so that, yeah, I can yep. definitely see the... The, uh, the benefits of having all of the technologies combined in yes. one space. Yeah, the, the combined things and the, the capability of the vSIM is beyond that. You know, the, the, a lot of the work that people are hoping to do in here involves the vibration capability of the system and there's a small amount of tilts possible as well. At the moment, that's not the main thing I'm interested in. I'd like to use utilize this system to look specifically at sports related mm. activity. So perhaps less clinical than some of the other applications, but... Um, yeah, I wonder if there's a way, so obviously for the, there might be some services which give more sort of uh, response back, so like a, like a spongy surface. Yes. And can you yeah. simulate that with this floor, perhaps? Yeah, we could perhaps simulate it. Um, I but it's probably know, easy just to put foam on top. I don't know how popular I'd be, but I might want to put different surfaces on top of it, which um, in the lab that we have at St. Luke's, we have used natural turf on occasion in there, which has <laughs> been quite interesting. And had to uh, keep it outside yes. when it wasn't being used so it could still grow and then cut it with a pair of scissors, <laughs> which was apparently fun. I didn't do that bit myself. Um, and we've also had the clay, the, the tennis surface clay is really messy as well. You get orange clay everywhere. So um, I'm excited about those applications. You are so... Um, so much less restricted with what yeah. you've got here in terms of both the movements. We have a very narrow lab, so it's the range of movement and also the data that you can collect. Can you collect data from multiple people in the space? Then? In the space you can. I think um, if you ask James Brownjohn afterwards about that, they are looking um, at how... And a really, a really exciting thing, thing about me in terms of collaborating with engineering, I think this is quite a key thing. So I'm a sports scientist and collaborating with engineering, especially engineers involved with structures of the interface between kind of the person and the environment, is exciting because I feel like I want to know what effect the environment has on a person. So what effect does changing the surface, for example, have on a person? And a certain engineer might want to know what effect does the person have on the playing surface? So some work we've done in the past has looked at soil surfaces and how changes in soil density can make a difference to a person's response. But in order for that soil to be, and the whole structure of that playing mm. surface to be optimised, it was important to know what effect the person had on the soil as well. So how deep did the stresses go within the surface? So we've had projects where we've had stress measured at levels of the playing surface, as well as the person on the top having measurements See. taken, and then combined that information to, in that case, optimize the playing surface wow. structure. So, so I imagine yeah, tech and digital things are heavily involved in your sort of research. Then, mm -hmm. um, is it is there any sort of one technology or revol revolutionary sort of system that that has come in within the past like ten years that you thought, oh my god, this is amazing. This make my job so much easier. Uh, I don't. I think it's been incremental. So. A big thing would be wearables at the moment. As a general term, that could really be anything. We could cover ourselves with different types of variables. We can measure oxygen consumption. We can measure heart rate. We can measure the load under the foot. We can put accelerometers in different parts of the body. We could cover ourselves with different devices that measure aspects of the demand on us, how we move, what physical, physiological demands there are as well. Um, but often that's not necessarily, it's providing us with lots of data, but it's what we do with that. And I guess it's the analysis side of the data that has come on substantially in the last 10 years rather than the kind of a piece of equipment. So looking at things like machine learning, which isn't something I'm familiar with, but you can see that that is allowing us to move on quite substantially in a short space of time in terms of understanding 
Whereas mm. I feel it's been more incremental in terms of the developments that we see in yeah. different pieces of equipment. I'm still measuring movement with the same kind of technology now as I was 20 years ago. Yeah, like I said, the instrumentation hasn't necessarily mm. moved on. It might not might now be wireless instead of wired, yep. or might have a battery so it can last longer kind of thing. It doesn't need to mm -hmm. be tethered. But I guess, yeah, the, the, the breakthroughs come from the analysis, what, analysis and grouping together of all that data. Uh, I think another thing that's changed quite a lot is how open people are to collaboration. I think people are looking now to find people who are at the forefront in different areas and work with them so that we can further our understanding. In my, in my case, it's of the human, but it can equally be of a sports surface, a, um, a mm. structural a bridge or something, all these different things that if we bring all the different skills together, we are going to understand things and yeah. move on more quickly. That's why we, that's why we as tech actor, we love running hackathons because you get that mashup of people from mm, all different yes, aspects. You yeah. get academics, um, designers, artists, creative people, software developers, data scientists, and all working together on a problem, all bringing their expertise in different areas, and you can get some amazing results. What implications for industry do you see in this? Are, are you looking for particular industry partners uh, at the current moment in time? Uh, yes, is, is in short. I think the potential for the facility uh, is, is, is not just to say that it's endless, it's more that we, don't, we haven't tapped into that yet. I think that in a lot of ways, promoting BSIM, we will see people having ideas that we would never have thought of. So I think that's a, quite an important aspect that we can't say this is necessarily, there's this industry area and this industry area and that's the way this facility is going to be used. I think that it, there are people who are going to see the facility and think of new things. More, more um, sort of exploratory. Yeah, that said, I mean, the current project we have that, that Joe will have spoken about with, is with Cozy Feet, a footwear company. So we're working there with a company that specialises in footwear for older adults, but haven't previously been involved in sport-specific footwear. And so we're working with them to understand the requirements in terms of sports movements of people who are over 55 and who are still active, which yeah. we have an increasing number of, to see whether there are specific requirements. So that's a nice industry application. Um, I can see that sports company, it, it doesn't have to be restricted to older adults. We're looking at older adults because it's a new area and an area where there's lots of um, funding yeah, because of the need. There's a lot of research done into like new, yeah. new footwear for like uh, young adults and young yeah, athletes. Exactly. And Although all the footwear, we see so much different sports specific footwear. It's designed in terms of research informed. It's based on young participants. And so that's a new area. But the scope for testing young people in here as well is, is, is great that we can talk to some of the indus potential industry partners in the footwear industry um, and other activity related. Something like, Someone asked me about walking poles the other day and he's like, yeah, that would um, be something that you could look at in our traditional lab, but the options here are much greater in terms of what happens if somebody is, um, experiences something unusual while they're, we've got this whole area to, to be able to monitor them and change things and see how they respond and whether having poles helps. Mm. So it might not help just routine walking down a flat lab or the degree of help in terms of taking load off a certain other structure may be quite small, but it may be more marked when something unusual happens. Absolutely, yeah. And having, <laughs> virtually simulating that environment as well in the headset is going to, mm -hmm. I think, really help with that as well. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Um, thank you so much for talking to us today. Um, yeah, we're going to have some videos about Joe's research and, and show those as well. Yeah, um, no, that'd and be great. We'd love to obviously hear about any uh, new research projects that you have coming up, or if you um, have any specific sort of shout outs or requirements for like, oh, I need someone, an expert in this, yeah. then just let us know and we can uh, let our community know and hopefully. Yeah, no, that's really good. Interest. Yeah, Brilliant. I assume you've got a website or something I can look at. Yeah, 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 yeah that'll be.